Hey everybody, it is Taylor of Summerdale Soul here. Thank you so much for joining me. Today, I'm gonna to start by once again confirming that I truly am my own worst enemy. What's new? So I need to scoot this big line underneath this square tube here and over this square tube. So I'll make that adjustment shortly, kind of go through, rearrange it. I'm gonna work on drilling in the wiring harness tray and getting that situated in, in place and grounding everything so I can hopefully pump some electricity through this. Let's do it. All right, I've got my second glass of wine and my sour gummy worms. Let's do this voiceover. You can see here I'm trying to pull this wiring set back a little further, I'm trying to get this tucked under in that fuse box. Unfortunately, you're going to have to unplug all of those thumb numbing connectors. As you can see, I'm very stubborn clearly and am thinking there's got to be a way to do this. Nope, just, just start unplugging. And once I finally just bit the bullet and actually did things the right way, I was able to loop this underneath and back over that square tube. With this in place, I'll now be able to wrestle that wiring tray with this going in that top right corner. With the harness where I think I want it to go, I was able to drill some buttery smooth holes into this aluminum wiring tray. While this step was easy, some other troubles popped up along the way. Ugh! Oh my god. Oh my god. Put your wiring tray in first. Just, just put your wiring tray in first. Also, don't eat six deviled eggs. I feel like garbage. <laughs> uh. Yeah. So, I have everything that connects to the steering column area feeding through this little corner. Got that connected to the starter here, or the ignition key thing, whatever. I'm so tired of wrestling. I took off the gauge pod because it was definitely in the way for all of this. But hopefully that gives you a little bit of direction as I had to readjust. After shoving what I could into the tray and some precarious foot placement, I was ready to drill in the wiring tray. Drilling those holes in the aluminum tray was a treat compared to this square tube. This is a much tougher material, so I started with a smaller bit to kind of work my way up. And to top off the struggle, it's time to rivet! I'm gonna do this like six more times. At least. Every time. Nailed it! That's one! Ow! Ouch! It's in! Right here I'm just trying to clean up this rubber socket thing that went into the previous firewall. I'm not going to use that, so off it goes. Alright, so with everything theoretically in place, it's time to set up where I'm going to be placing my grounds. Now I'm hoping these won't have to move. Cross your fingers for me. I think I have everything set up where I want it. Unfortunately, that means I need to sand. And it hurts. Sanding down your beautiful and expensive power coat, even though you've scratched it several times now, is just as upsetting as that very first scratch on day one. Does anybody else hear that song? All around me are familiar faces, worn out places? Ugh, round two. The most upsetting part is that I hope I ground enough down. I'll need bare metal to have a good connection. And now it's time to drill that hole. With the hole drilled out, I can now place that ground in its new home. I repeated the same steps on the other side and secured the ground in place. So the ground connected to the block wasn't quite long enough to get to the chassis, so I needed to swap this out for a longer one. With that connected to the rear of the block, I was ready to repeat the process. Here you can see where I chose to ground things on the passenger side. These were kind of tight, so I had to work a little bit more on the inside. Now that all the grounds up front have been chased down and addressed, it's time to look at the ones in the back. With the rear driver side location sanded down and drilled out, I installed the fuel pump ground and something else coming from the back of that wiring harness. Not sure what that one is. I did my best to position them so going forward I can tuck them down. We'll see. Next, I started on the process for the negative terminal ground. 
I have a feeling I might move this later on, so looking at this is going to hurt me later, but for now, this is where I put it. With that installed, the battery is almost ready to be connected. Lastly, there's a pre-drilled hole in the back of the power plant frame where I connected this final tab that runs near the battery. With everything seemingly ready, it's time to connect the battery. I put the terminals on in the right order and tightened up the little nuts. But since I left the battery just sitting during this whole process, it needed some motivation. Okay, so right now I am just waiting for the battery to hopefully hold a little bit of a charge. Fingers crossed that I can light this thing up like a Christmas tree. I've got all the grounds that I'm aware of connected and I just wanna see some lights on the dash. Here we go. We have signs of life. Crazy life, but signs of life. It's hard to see, but both of my hazards are flashing so fast. My oil pressure gauge is screaming danger to manifold. I'm getting a weird RPM jump when I turn it on and off. And one of my indicator lights stays right, on a, regardless of turning the car of off. I'm hoping I need to just clear off some more grounds, but if you have any advice, I'm happy to take it. Means. So far, I'm pretty happy where I have everything placed. It's not pretty, which is why I have the wiring tray cover. I'm drilling out the holes now and installing this to have a nice, pretty little home. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and following along. I'm looking forward to hopefully getting this started for y'all soon. I might live stream it. I will keep you posted, so stick around. Thanks again, and I will catch you next time.